So this is a pretty amazing site right here. This is a ULES camera map. And Julie and her team are tracking the destruction of the ULES cameras. I set up a convenience URL that will take you straight to this map where you can check in for the live updates. Just go to timtruth.com slash ULES map. And this is a really interesting map that shows us the new expanded ULES zone that encompasses all of London. Throughout London, they've set up 2,184 cameras that are being individually tracked by this team. You can see there's various parameters, inner London and outer London, where they have a huge plethora of these cameras in a big array. So the red cameras are the ones that are still operational so far. And the black cameras are the ones that have been confirmed to have been destroyed. And the numbers and the data are showing us that Southeast Londoners are standing up to the greatest extent. You can see the vast destruction of the ULES system in Southeast London. According to the Daily Mail headline, as you can see here, nine out of 10 ULES cameras have been vandalized in Southeast London. Nine out of 10 ULES cameras have been destroyed by vigilantes. So again, throughout London, there are 2,184 ULES cameras. So under the cover of the night, using the excuse of protecting the climate, the government is getting their foot in the door big time, setting up 2,184 social credit cameras to attack the working and the poor classes mercilessly with automated penalties and fines. This is obscene and evil. So the big question is going to be, what will happen when Transport for London drives their cameras, their mobile ULES cameras, through Southeast London? Will they be attacked back by the victimized people? Time will tell, but we'll be watching very closely. It'll also be interesting to see what happens to the rest of the cameras. Will the destroyed cameras be replaced? Will more be deployed? What about the secret cameras that we're being told are being deployed? What about the mobile cameras? A lot of moving parts here and a ton of cameras. So according to this map, 545 cameras have been destroyed to date, 25% of the total. And again, the key concentration in Southeast London. So the full-blown citywide ULES has only been in operation for a few days now. And already we're seeing 25% of their cameras destroyed. People are developing new ways to destroy the cameras. Some going as far as taking the cameras and confiscating them. Others snip the lines. Others smash them up. And a new trend that I think is very interesting as well are people spray painting the lenses or obstructing the camera's view with stickers applied on the lens. So it's a bit of a civil war going on in London. In this map right here, again at timtruth.com slash map, shows us almost the scoreboard of the quasi-civil war. At this rate, the UK will soon become the ULEC, the ultra-low emission kingdom, as ULES continues to expand. All right, the eco-fascists in London have actually done it. The entire city now has been turned into an ultra-low emission zone, as they call it, which is just a euphemism, the greater good excuse, to blame human consumption in a bid to limit it, to ration it, to commodify it and sell it to only those who can afford it. So we keep seeing ULEZ expand and expand, and it's clear that it will continue to do so. Take, for instance, the emission standards. Clearly, these are going to continue to be ramped higher and higher and higher. And strategically, it's best for these eco-fascists to get their foot in the door with as little resistance as possible before they go absolutely hog wild with the extortion racket. I mean, this is a textbook example of mission creep. And by getting their foot in the door and by progressively making the situation worse and worse for the working man, Using this excuse of the greater good and reducing pollution and emissions by rationing consumption. Now all the traffic is monitored and surveilled in real time and punishing people for using the road. Nickel and diming working class people driving to work. I find it all so sick. And we have a bit of a civil war situation going on in England as we speak. On one hand, we have the tyrannical government putting up thousands and thousands of spy cameras, surveillance cameras, to extort the working man who has to use the roads for work. 
or to take care of their family. This is a huge burden to add to the backs of the poor and the working class. Absolutely disastrous policy. So the government has put up 2,200 cameras, and they continue to expand to ULEZ. They've expanded ULEZ to all of London. The city has become a panopticon with social credit cameras everywhere. But the people are responding and are tearing down these cameras in mass. We'll look at this closely in a second. And this is especially true in South London. South London gets the gold medal for having taken down the most ULEZ cameras. So we'll be talking about all this ULEZ news and more. But before we start, let me give a big shout out to the sponsor of this video, FE Battery Metals. FE Battery Metals specializes in exploring for lithium metal. Their flagship property is called the Augustus Lithium Property. It's located in Quebec, Canada. The company owns over 60,000 acres in Quebec, and they have numerous other projects exploring for lithium throughout North America. FE Battery Metals has put hundreds of millions of dollars into developing this property in the James Bay region. This is a very strategically selected area that they will be further exploring looking for lithium metal. So this company has acquired a lot of very strategic land where they will be diligently exploring for lithium. One thing that this company is really excited about is their expertise in lithium exploration. They have a ton of subject matter expertise when it comes to exploring for lithium. One of their top scientists is an expert geologist who in 2020 won the Yukon Prospector of the Year Award. And he was given this award because at a different company, he found a huge gold deposit. And this allowed the company to sell the gold that was found for $139 million. So the company's excited they have a very strategic location, a bunch of land under which to explore. And they think they have the right expert geologist for the job. You can check out their presentation and learn more about them at febatterymetals.com. They trade in the United States with the ticker FEMFF. So a big thank you to FE Battery Metals for sponsoring this video. Again, their website to learn more is febatterymetals.com. The city has become a panopticon with social credit cameras everywhere. But the people are responding and are tearing down these cameras in mass. We'll look at this closely in a second. And this is especially true in South London. South London gets the gold medal for having taken down the most ULEZ cameras. But the government refuses to be defeated. Chief con man Sadiq Khan, the leader of this corrupt government, has announced that he's going to send out 20 mobile vans with ULEZ cameras strapped on their tops. Here are some photos of the fleet of vans that people are starting to see surveilling their neighborhoods. This is so sinister and creepy. Straight out of 1984, everything's being surveilled, and they're already using their favorite climate excuse to justify social credit systems where people are scored and penalized for consuming. This is solidifying the new technocratic caste system. This is poverty enforcement. And we shouldn't take their word when they give us their excuses for why they're putting thousands and thousands of cameras to track people's social credit for the greater good in fighting climate change. They're going to make this as palatable as possible, but you have to look at what they're actually doing. What are their actions showing? Well, they're putting thousands of cameras up and using high-tech AI to find people for driving to work. And this isn't the worst of it. This is just the first stepping stone on the highway to dystopian hell. And the government has already made the important leap by which now they're driving around with cameras. And as we covered in the last episode, they're announcing hidden cameras, secret cameras. So there's no telling where that will be deployed. So the government's trying to talk a really big game, threatening huge punishments and saying they'll find the people who've been destroying these cameras in the hundreds. The numbers I'm seeing show 545 destroyed ULEZ cameras. But my question is, what's going to happen to these cameras on the top of these vans? That becomes the next target for the Blade Runners. Think about this. These vans are going to have to drive, especially where the Blade Runners have been taking down cameras. So that means in South London and Southeast London especially. But that region is full of people so pissed off at ULEZ that they are systematically tearing down this slave grid in its embryonic stage. But the system is trying to refortify itself 
But the question is, what will happen when they start driving these spy vans around? Finding the working class relentlessly. Will these cameras start to be disabled? And how will that be done? And then the next question is, will the government rely more on secret spy cameras if the vans start coming under attack? So this is all fascinating. So as I mentioned earlier, Sadiq Khan is responding to the spate of U.S. camera destruction with a fleet of mobile cameras. So they're driving around with these big white vans with U.S. cameras strapped on their roofs. And people are pissed off. And there's a lot of speculation now that maybe this will be the next target for the Blade Runners. Will they start attacking the U.S. cameras that are being driven around using these white vans? Here's an interesting headline from the Daily Mail. Sadiq Khan tightens the squeeze on drivers. Mayor deploys fleet of U.S. camera vans to catch drivers after vigilantes launched more than 500 attacks on the U.S. cameras. Some people are questioning if this was the plan all along to move to the vans and to the secret cameras, etc. There's a lot of people complaining about these parked vans sitting in strategic locations. Here's one van that got a lot of people talking parked outside of Heathrow Airport. People are sharing photos of this, and many are outraged. Now, it seems that people have also come across where these vans are parked. Now, I don't have this information myself, but this is interesting in the quasi-civil war that we're seeing on the streets of London. It seems like the government might be leaving itself vulnerable to having a large number of their vans torched at once. So we'll keep a close eye on that, of course. Now let's look at some photos of these attacked U.S. cameras. Here's California Frizz on Twitter. Spotted today, Blade Runners have removed 10 plus U.S. cameras at major junctions in Royslip, Royslip Manor, and Eastcott. And they think Khan will have to pull the plug or it'll be pulled on him. Now these photos are really remarkable. You can see not only were they first cut, the wire cut between the camera and the AI hub scanning all the license plates, but the camera itself has been removed. So it seems as though the Blade Runners are becoming very adept in tearing down these cameras, disabling them and rendering them useless. Or better yet, taking them away altogether. And here's another camera, same situation. Cut and removed. Here are some photos of the U.S. cameras under attack. Some vigilantes have gone so far as to cut the entire pole. These cameras are so under attack that oftentimes you see them disabled using different distinct means. The same camera. So first, somebody will come along, spray paint it, or put a bag over it, or cut the wires. And then somebody comes along and says, hey, I'm just going to cut the whole pole in half. So as time progresses, and remember, we're just a few days in, people continually tear down these cameras more and more and more. So it'll be interesting to see who wins the arms race. The government lackeys putting these cameras up and repairing them and driving them around strapped to the roofs of their car. Or the freedom fighters tearing these down relentlessly. Now this is interesting. This is from just a couple days ago. September the 1st. This is European Insider on Twitter from just three days ago. Over a quarter of all cameras in Greater London's newly expanded ULES zone have been taken offline. New data reveals. A crowdsourced map appears to show that 450 of the 1,762 cameras are either destroyed or missing. So what's interesting is both of these numbers have gone up. The number of destroyed cameras has gone up to 545, which is about another 100 cameras destroyed in the last three days. Or, I guess, found to be destroyed. But what's interesting is the total count of cameras has gone up from 1,762 to 2,184. This means that while the Freedom Fighters took out about 100 cameras, Sadiq Khan's henchmen have put up another 422. Now, the other possibility is that more and more are becoming accounted for in this open-sourced, crowdsourced map which is available, just go to timtruth.com slash map, and it'll link you straight there. Here are some more photos of this iconic camera being smashed and cut in half after it had been covered with a box previously that said, no ULES. Here's an interesting thought experiment by Lee Hurst. I wonder what will happen to these vans. And that's in reference to this headline from The Telegraph. Sadiq Khan deploys ULES vans after vigilantes attack the cameras. Also, we need to keep an eye on the secret cameras, the hidden cameras, that are also being deployed using the excuse of the smashed ULS cameras. And speaking of smashed ULS cameras, here are some more photos showing us a variety of different techniques used to disable the cameras. In this case, spray paint on the lens. 
And here's another one that was cut off halfway through the poll. Another key element is people are protesting and raising awareness. We're also seeing graffiti going up, saying to stop Ulez. And also activists are raising awareness with stickers. Look at this. This is a pretty amazing piece of graffiti. Stop Ulez. And then it says Blade Runners. So people are putting their artistic talents to work for freedom. Here's an example of an FCUK Con sticker being put over the lens of the camera. And here's another example where it looks like there's been numerous rounds of obstructing stickers and paint applied to the lens of this camera. Here's some more stickers being put up. On the polls, people are putting stickers with an arrow pointing up at the camera and the text that reads, Ulez Spy Camera. And then this person put a sticker that tells people the camera is spying on them while at the same time obstructing its view. That's killing two birds with one stone. In other interesting developments, Transport for London and the London government are now enforcing their cameras with more armor. They're reinforcing and fortifying their cameras to make it harder for the Blade Runners to smash and grab. Will it work? Well, it doesn't seem like the government has too much hope as, again, they're looking to deploy the mobile cameras and the hidden cameras. And the cameras that people do know about are being systematically targeted and destroyed. And again, this has only been in effect for all of London for a little shy of a week. So this is coming to a head really fast. So it seems like the Blade Runners have a stronghold in southeast London. Here's a video from this key territory. We see two cameras with their lines snipped that have been labeled with stickers from activists as ULEZ spy cameras in a trend that I'm sure will continue. And here's one of the victims of this ULEZ scheme. Jimmy the Peaks on Twitter. I thought this was really telling. So in addition to being nickeled and dimed for going to work, to add insult to injury, Transport for London, who's behind this treacherous plan to instill ULEZ by force and technocratic surveillance, TFL has blocked Jimmy on Twitter. He says, oh dear, TFL are happy to charge me 3,000 pounds per year. ULEZ tax, but they are not willing to discuss it on Twitter. So in closing, I think it's obvious that the ULEZ system is a scam to fleece the working class and put car ownership and regular use out of the reach of most people. But instead of saying exactly what this plan is for, the government is blaming climate change and saying they must step in to remedy the situation with more taxation. But thankfully, a lot of people see through the scam and are fighting tooth and nail to prevent such a horrid system from being rolled out across the world. So, of course, we'll be watching this very, very closely. And I'll bring you all the updates as they break.